Hello, welcome back to your election command center. Now, the All People's Congress, APC, is going into the 2020 elections with its agenda of uh, transforming Ghana and restoring hope. There are quite a number of uh, promises, proposed policies that the party has put out there already ahead of the launch of its uh, manifesto at the end of uh, this month. Now, ahead of that, uh, we're having a conversation with presidential nominee Hassan Ayariga, who is joining us in the studio for us to walk through the party's policy ideas and what exactly is in for them when they win the elections to form the next government. Uh, thanks very much for coming. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How so, so how are things shaping up in terms of uh, your preparations towards the launch of your manifesto, and subsequently what you intend to do when you, you get into power. Things are moving on well. Next week, we'll be out during the running meet, and then end of the month, we'll launch the manifesto. But so far, the party executives and the regional executives are the grassroots campaigning, and then educating people about our policies that we intend to implement when given the mandate and also encouraging them to come out and vote in the 2020 general elections. And vote for your party. And vote for our you party. You are hopeful. Like every year, you've been hopeful of winning the elections, but you never win. Yeah, that's, uh, this is my second time. Mm. The first time was under the leadership of the AP, uh, PNC, mm. and this is the APC. That's a new party that's entirely. That's a new party altogether. So that yes. will be your first time. That, that will be my first APC. time, yes. Mm. Yes, contesting under the, lead, uh, the ticket of the APC. Right, so, so before we continue with our conversation, let's quickly uh, get into your policies and uh, expose Ghanaians to the policies which your party will be encapsulating in the manifesto, which will be launched. So I start with uh, uh, corrupt free economy. The APC is promising a corrupt free economy, decentralized state, free port, duty free for cars, free education from primary to university, digitized economy, production and manufacturing uh, hub economy unique identifier so uh, I, 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 identification so the different passports you say support local banks and support businesses to strive unemployment benefits for all so and then let's move on to other other uh, proposed policies rail and train transportation system throughout the country uh, graduate graduate project financing policy improve health care delivery ultra modern hospitals nationwide and i must say that we are encapsulating this in uh, these bullet points to make them uh, presentable for us and since hassan araga is here he'll be talking to us through these and a little give us a little more details free dialysis free diabetic education and free delivery of policy the free delivery, uh, policy, delivery policy i beg your pardon free delivery policy for mothers and uh, price guarantee system is down there that's a price guarantee system is um we'll talk about that loan facilities for bus drivers uh, taxi drivers and truck truck drivers and then concrete roads and underground system food security and industrialized industrialized economy and then establish job centers nationwide and high rising uh, housing projects so we've seen through all the uh, policies which you have listed. let's 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 talk about your party's uh, key thrust, because when I say key thrust, we take, for example, the MPP came up uh, with its free SHS, which was a uh, government flagship driver of, of moving uh, this country forward. Is there anything like that which is flagship for your party, a uh, APC? Ghana needs something more than just one policy mm. or a promise. You cannot just come with a particular promise and expect every Ghanaian to buy into and that will solve the problems mm. of our nation. Mm. Our nation is bigger than just one problem. The crisis we find ourselves in is bigger than making promises. We don't need promises as a nation. What we need are policies. And there's a difference between promises and policies. So what you're promising are not... We are not what, promising what anything. What you, you have here are not are, promises. Are not promises. They're they are policies. policies. Okay. So there's a difference between making promises and making Mm. policies. Mm. We are making policies that will sustain the economy and the nation for life. Not promises that as a government you just come and promise and walk away. So in a nutshell, the first thing we'll be looking at is a, a national development plan. A national development plan. In that national development plan, we will put up these policies 
that will strengthen. So you are gonna you are gonna create a new uh, national development plan, or you are going to work with the existing development plan, forty year development plan, I don't which think was we are, aligned we, we, by the national development planning commission. That that plan has been thrown to the dogs. I don't think that no any of the political parties that you well the plan them, is there. Nobody yeah, is implementing. Yeah, but you see that they are not implementing it. Mm. They, they come with promises. So you also throw it to the dogs? No, I'm not throwing it to the dogs. We will integrate it into our system with these policies. How are you going to do that? Because we'll look at what the government has proposed over the years, for the next 40 years, and bring in our policies for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. And these policies are sustainable policies that will transform our nation. We, we always make promises just to win elections. But that is not what APC is looking for. The APC is not looking promises to win elections. The APC is looking policies to sustain our economy and give us a better Ghana. A nation that will, be, will have strong institutions, a nation that can rely on its institutions and can sustain those institutions and those policies. But, but, but some of the policy directions you've stated are capital intensive, free primary education through to university. How are you going to get the money to do that? That's, the, that's, that's an easy thing to do. Easy to do? Easy to do. What do we spend in education? How much do we spend in education? When people talk about free education from the primary level to the tertiary level, so far, currently, we have 18,500 primary schools, 8,590, uh, uh, what do you call it, senior, junior high schools. Mm -hmm. We have 900 senior high schools, all right? And we have 26, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, how do you call those schools? Technical schools. Technical then we have 15 private universities and six public universities. Okay, if you put them together, these are not students, institutions that we cannot finance using our resources that we have available to us. In a nutshell, you ask yourself, what, is it, what, what does it take to implement free senior Fall back on the oil revenue or you work, borrow from we don't, the central you, bank? We don't, we're not going to borrow. If you look at if you look at our manifesto that is going to come out, you see that we are not talking about borrowing. We are actually talking about how to reduce our debt stock, not borrowing. We don't need to borrow. So where money. would you get the money? <laughs> the money is in the system. One. But the MVP, huh? MVP, when it was going on the campaign for 2016, went on the same time. This, I'm the not money talking, is in the system. We are not talking about MPP. We are talking about APC. Hmm. The MPP has failed. The NDC has failed. And that is why we are the alternative. And we are not talking about what they have failed. You can be talking about that. I am here to talk about what I can do for Madagana and the policies I put in place to help Ghana transform. And that's what I'm looking so at. So you will find the money to I'm implement not the, the money is primary to university education. Exactly. This is only one policy. There's several mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. No, integrated. I mean, I'm only making reference to this one in order for us to explore where you're... If we cut down on corruption... Mm -hmm. We have enough money to implement free senior high school from the primary level to the tertiary level. Without, huge, without huge, sums, huge sums of resources goes into corruption. If we widen our tax system and create an enabling environment for businesses to thrive, we get enough income to run free senior high school and free primary level to the tertiary level. What else is your question? Let's continue. No, I mean, no, we're still talking about that's that. You that's just it. mentioned uh, cutting back on corruption. So you, Cutting you, back on corruption, policy, creating in, an, in, an enabling environment exactly. for business so, so to thrive, widening our tax mm. system, you know, growing our economy. That's a whole lot of so money. All of, these, all of these are going to bring you sufficient resources to implement the, uh, the policies you have without necessarily having to borrow. I, I wanted to establish that. I'm you not going to borrow. You are, you are, when you get into power, you are going to end corruption. Tell me how you're going to do that. The, Good. Various political, the other political parties have made proposals of how they're going to do that. The NDC has said that they're going to create a sting, uh, Operation Sting or something of that sort. But what approach would you use in, first in of all, curbing corruption? First of all, the APC will create what we call a national data system. Mm. A national data system that will give a true picture of everybody in Ghana. It will capture your details, your work, what you do, your income, where you work. So you are going to ditch the existing national identification system? That is a national identification, NIA. That's not a national data system. Mm -hmm. 
there's a difference between identification and a data system. A data system. They are two different things, so don't put them okay. together. Yeah. Right. I, I want you to relax and listen to the APC policy. Don't mingle us together with the NDC and MPP. Mm. They are, I, they I, are shouldn't entitled get, I shouldn't get crowded with yeah, yes, what yeah. the NDC has no, done before or what the MPP No, no, they are, entirely, but, but they are doing entirely something but, different. But that's the benchmark. Our yeah, country has been governed. I mean, they have formed the, the largest governments in this country since 1992. And that is why we are suffering. Mm. The size of a government cannot determine the performance of a government. And that's over the years what the people of Ghana don't understand. That the size of your political party cannot determine the quality of leadership. Mm -hmm. So over the years, people think that, oh, it is NDC and MPP that have the best leaders and have the bigger platform, and they can get the best leaders to, to, to drive this nation. I tell you, they only have the worst leaders mm -hmm. to drive this nation into the ditch. And that's what they've done over the years. And that's why in the 21st century, we don't have food security. That's why in the 21st century, the nearest leave cannot have three square meals. When other countries are building castles in the air, we are struggling just to get food. That is why in the 21st century, our, our road systems are bad. That's why in the 21st century, our healthcare is worsened every day. So you ask yourself, if they say they have the men and they have the leadership, what happens to Ghana that Ghana is crippling every day? So let's forget about NDC and MPP and concentrate with the APC and the policies that an area is here to talk about. And you cut down corruption. You end corruption. How I end the corruption. How like I said, that? we'll have a data system mm. that will capture everybody's information, which includes your data system, your where you work, your income, your salary, and all that. You see, that system is a perfect and unique system. So if you, for instance, you're poor and you work in TV3, and you earn 1,000 Ghana dollars a month, mm. and then you owe three cars, you have five houses. The system will show that you have five houses and more than three cars. And we will compare that system, your income against your, your properties mm. and your wealth, and we'll get to know that you are corrupt. You have to come and account to how you got those houses, that, that, that would be like a big brother state. You're watching everybody. Uh, uh, in exactly. That to, is that is in, in your attempt to curb corruption. Exactly. You're, 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 I'm taking you're care perhaps, of you. You're perhaps going to infringe on the rights of individuals that and is, their privacy and all of that. That's because my policy. If, if I work here and I get a thousand dollars, like you said, and yeah. I have five houses, which I don't have, by the way. I pray the, you have five there houses. There is the, the legal way. There is yes. I, I, I thank you. There is the possibility of me being able to get extra incomes in order to improve my earnings. The system will the show. database ca capture that? that? Data, yeah, it will capture that. Whatever you do, whatever you do, even when you go to mm -hmm. the bank and withdraw $1,000 or 1,000 Ghana cities, then we are where you just withdrawn 1,000 Ghana. The system will show. Even when you don't go to the bank to take money and you are living on different means, you'll be invited to tell us how you're living on. Because and you all, need and all of that and all of those systems is going to cut down in, corruption. It, all then of we'll that go. will be in four years. All of that is strong and institutions. That's, that's, that's those are the policies. An intrusion into people's rights to privacy. I just told you that. If I take care of you and I'm supposed to manage you, you don't have privacy. But you're not supposed to manage me. I'm supposed. I'm the leader of you're the country. You're supposed to empower. And that's what I'm doing. In order to if you don't results. have work, if you don't have a job, I take care of you. Did you look at unemployment because benefits? Because you give free uh, unemployment, benefit. unemployment yes, benefits. Yes, of so course. If you are giving me unemployment benefits, then you're saying that you have a right to monitor what I do with my time. I am or the how leader. I train to get skill in order to get a job. If that's I'm, different from telling me that you, I need to make money or earn income and laid out. Uh, you uh, ask me how I'm going to fight corruption. Mm. And you're telling me. And I'm telling you. And I'm telling you that system. And you are debating that I'm, t I'm, I'm going into your privacy. As a president of the Republic of Ghana, it is my responsibility to make sure that everybody does That's the right thing. That's going to be like autocratic, you know. It's not an autocratic. It's like living it's a, in Russia. A, <laughs> if, you, if you feel that you're living in Russia, so be it. Or you can move. If you don't want my system, you can move out and go and live in mm. Russia. Or move and go and live in Siberia or yeah. wherever. That's it. But that system is to check you and all balance. So you're saying that you're going to get tough on corruption? I'm going to get tough. By setting Very up tough. a robust uh, national data, data system, system which that will monitor everybody monitor and everybody capture data. every details of every What else would you monitor? A whole lot of things. For instance, we in the APC, in our manifesto, the 2016 manifesto, we spoke about independent special prosecutor. The MPP in their manifesto, I would say in picking some except of our manifesto, they spoke about special prosecutor. 
There's a difference between an independent special prosecutor that has an arrogant the APC system and the special prosecutor of the MPP, which has become, let me say... How different would that good. be? Good. You see, the APC's special prosecutor is an independent body, autonomous, that has the power and the authority. You don't the think authority. the special prosecutor yes. is independent? Yes, but the one we have now works under the office of the attorney general. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the difference. So he okay. can bite, he can do much. So that is why you see that he is not that active that we, every Ghanaian, expected him to be. But in any case, uh, that is why we are talking about an all-inclusive governance system. If the NPP had invited the APC's manifesto team, including Hassan Yaga, to discuss how we should adapt and implement the special prosecutor, I don't think we'll be where we are. So far, who has it prosecuted? Nobody. His hands are tied and you want him to prosecute. You have an office of attorney general handling those of files and giving him orders to do. Under our special prosecutor, he is not going to work, or she is not going to work under the office of the attorney general. He becomes autonomous. So when our system checks that you are corrupt, the special prosecutor did, gets the data and the information, and you are invited. You don't need to send petitions. The petitions are automatically sent to his office from the system and the data system. I want to talk a little bit about uh, your party structure, parliamentary candidate, who is contesting what and whether you are presenting people for all 275 uh, constituencies or not. Tell me the preparations uh, ongoing for the uh, election or nomination of parliamentary candidates for your party. I think so far we have over 150 parliamentary candidates that are going to be filed. And uh, we're looking at realistically constituencies that we think when we work hard we can win. We're not going to waste enough resources on constituencies that we believe that it's going to be tough for our candidates to win. So what we intend to do in those constituencies is to turn some of them into campaign directors rather than parliamentary candidates. And they campaign heavily They are campaign the directors candidates. and they will be contesting? For no, they won't be contesting. they won't be contesting? They won't be contesting. They will so. become campaign directors in the constituency mm. and they will campaign for the presidential candidate and the party. And they will be known to the constituency so very well. Yeah. But there are certain constituencies we believe with some push and good candidates you can that we win have for the constituency. We, we don't, don't forget and, and that uh, members of parliament. Yes, there. don't forget that with the parliamentary election, it's majority. Mm. It's by majority. It's not like with the presidential mm. where you have by numbers, all right? So by, by percentage, okay? So that's what we're doing. And we are glad that Ghanaians are beginning to understand the difference between the NDC and the MPP and APC. Over the years, they've seen the recycling of the NDs and the MPP. And to be very honest, they are not happy. They are really not happy with the current situation. And we are giving them alternative policies. You know, over the past eight years, uh, the, being, uh, the perception of your presence in the political space as a joke. And I want to believe that over the, the, the past eight years, you may have been working hard to shed yourself off from uh, people's perception that the APC or yourself, you are for a joke from the Ayarikov instances up to now. What are you doing different to make the Ghanaian see you as a forceful, serious political establishment? First of all, let me debunk the issue of Hassan Erga touted as a joker. The mere fact that I smile with you, mm. relate with you like a normal human being, mm. and a friendly human mm. being does not make And me also joker. make me laugh sometimes. It doesn't matter. Mm. That is my posture, and that's my mm. way of interacting with people. Mm. And that does not make me a joker. Mm. That is number one. Mm. Number two, if I have a ill health and I cough in the process, in which I made clear to the Ghanaians that within that period I had cold, and I was not going to contest, I was not going to partake in the uh, debate and that I had called. And then people were like, you have to go, you have to go. Go and show. When it shows, people will see that you have ill health. That was not... But you made, you made a lot of jokes about is not, that. Like what? You made a joke about the, the, the perception of uh, Ayarikov. That's what I'm that telling you. From you. For instance, I'm, I'm, giving, I'm making the record straight. Mm. So you need to listen, not mm. what you perceive. Mm. Listen to me. Your assumptions and perceptions are uh, entirely the, yours. Are in the way of objectivity. Yes, but let me tell you what okay. happened. That's so right. that viewers watching and listening to you and I mm. will know that it wasn't a joke. For instance, can you say that when the president was being inaugurated, mm. Nana Akufadu, mm. that was the biggest platform ever, and he coughed continuously, will you come and say Nana Kof? Or Nana Nana Kof? No, but if he coughed, he coughed for more than three minutes. 
I watched it once out of this country. Mm -hmm. And even to the extent the first lady was worried, second lady, was, people have to rush there. You can play mm -hmm. the video again. Will you take that as Nanakov? You see, sometimes, let's be serious. Let us not begin to tag people differently with our own perceptions. Mm. Let's leave them to do the thing. Mm. So if I coughed at the debate, did it some way or the other reduce my performance at the debate? Not at all. But in any case, I want you to know that the Hassan Erga in 2012 is not a Hassan Erga in 2020. What has changed? Over the years in 2012, when I came from Germany as a young man, 40 years of age, coming into big time, politics mm. as the first position to occupy in my life was a presidential candidate. I've never occupied any position. Getting to know the relationship between him and, and politics, it took time. I learned by the day as mm. years went mm. by. Mm. I, I experienced one round, became expert in politics, I've studied a lot, learned a lot, and experienced and really understand the dynamics of the Ghanaian politics compared to other and countries. And you're here to stay. And I'm telling you impact. that I am in to win. You're to in to win. I'm in to we win. had this before when you represented the, uh, the, the uh, PNC, uh, that you are in to win. So we're saying this again. I'm saying you're this again. To win. And I'm in to win. What's the difference? Between the, difference the difference. What the PNC, which was a more established political uh, party, uh, gave you the platform to win. You, What's different you from cannot that? Say, you cannot that? say... The PNC was a more established. So you're referring to the APC as not well established. I debunk that. I don't agree with you. That's your view. But that's the, your view but, too. But, but, but let me tell you, so far, so far. Shows, you, your party is new. The, 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 the data shows. The data have you shows checked the data? Party. Have you checked the data of the PNC performance in 2016 of their parliamentary candidate against the APC without a presidential candidate? Try and make that references. Mm -hmm. And you will see that the APC candidate, parliamentary candidate, performed better than the PNC and most of the parliamentary candidates of the minority parties. Mm. So don't sit down and make your assumptions like Ghanaians and say it shows. There's no data that shows that they have performed better. In any case, so far, so you APC, are, you're, you're so, far win, that's the thrust. so far, APC has done their parliamentary uh, constituency, regional election. They've elected a flag bearer. They are on to elect to outdoor their running mate and their manifesto. Where is the PNC? Where are they? It seem so, to exist. so you're saying that <laughs> they have not even done APC, constituency elections. The, the APC, they have not done regional elections. Not to talk about flag bearer. They don't even have a flag bearer. So when you're talking about records, talk about records now. And not the past. And not the past. So let's talk now about your parliamentary candidate. You raised the issue, but I still want to go back to uh, the parliamentary candidates' debates because you do know that uh, the performance of the various political parties, you mentioned that your party, according to the data, had performed better, but... The reality is that you didn't win any any seats. I didn't contest, and they, they, they didn't win it. They didn't win any seats. seats to That's go fine, into but not this so, year. Mm -hmm. So tell me what mechanisms your party is putting in place to ensure that they hundred and how many did you say hundred fifty hundred and fifty you're yeah. fielding for uh, parliament are indeed going to win. First of all, what we've done is that in all the police stations in in Ghana, mm. we have put twenty membership each mm. at the police station. If you look at the records of man, most of the minority parties in the past, and any time they mention police station A or B, their records were either zero, 0101, zero, one, like testing mic. Okay, right now, we are not going to be part of that testing mic. So we, in every police station, has 20 members executive, which are members of the party. So you now multiply 20 by 29,000. You'll be getting 584,000 members. That is just the base of the APC at the police station level. So multiply, divide that by 8, 12 million and you will see the percentage we are already holding at hand against 2020 elections. So clearly, we have put strategic policies and mechanisms in place, in place to increase your membership. To increase nationwide. our membership and, and votes. Subsequently your and votes. Mm. Now the other thing is that really if you look very well, you will see that there was a T-shirt that was printed, hashtag. Yes. With your vote. With your vote and Hassan. I was going to come to that. Yes. Now, that T-shirt is a different angle of campaign. We Ghanaians believe that, yes, of course, the minority parties, if the NDC and the MPP go out there and tell Ghanaians that, oh, if you vote for Hassan, mm -hmm. Let me go back to uh, that image you just spoke about so that we can...
we can show. So this is what you, you're, you're this talking about. This is what I'm about. referring to. It's a T-shirt. What's a t -shirt. the concept? I was talking to Bella Mundi a while ago about it. With my vote on Hassan Ayerga, uh, it, it, it doesn't sound positive. It sounds, sound. sounds it, negative. That is a political strategy. To you, it sounds negative. To me, it's a different perception of it. Waste my vote on Hassan Erga. If Ghanaians are tired of the NDC and the MPP, and they do not want to vote again, and they believe that if they've wasted their vote on NDC and MPP, and over the years they haven't achieved anything, today is the time for them to waste their vote on Hassan Erga and see the difference. So if you're tired of voting, you don't want to vote, you feel like, oh, I don't care, I'm, I'm not interested in voting anymore. Take that vote and say whether Hassan Erga wins or not, I'm going to waste that vote on him. So and let's see so, the percentage. So, so how many uh, support base have you been able to marshal with this? Let me let me be very honest with you. You see this T-shirt? You see this T-shirt was mm. not even printed by the APC. Mm. It was rather printed by members who trust in Hassan Ega and believe in the Hassan Ega policies. That those who listen to me on TV and radio, they came out with that idea and said, "Look, Mr. Ega, we admire your way of campaign now." We admire your policies. We like the way you carry yourself now. And we enjoy you. And we think that you are the best leader for Ghana. Undoubtedly, we believe in you. We have faith in you. And we trust in you. And we think when Ghana is given to you, a lot of changes will come. So we are going to waste our vote on you, whether you win or not. Interesting. You made quite a lot of promises. but before I didn't make a promise. I told you. Okay, I made so you said policies. You, 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 you Don't confuse they are, me with they are NDC. Policies. Okay, yeah. so, I mean, you've heard the manifestos of uh, the NDC and the MPP. Before we go, I want to have your take on some of the uh, major issues that have come up, including uh, legalizing Okada, including uh, creating airports in places like uh, Central Region and the Upper East Region. Both the NDC and the MPP have... Uh, spoken extensively about road infrastructure, constructing and expanding health. You have also made those proposals, and you are saying that you're not going to borrow to fund all of those. So the difference in strategies that you say that uh, they are making promises, you are putting forward policy, policy proposals. Yeah. Tell me what you make of uh, these kind manifestos of that are being thrown out. I think, I think that I, I listened to both manifestos, but not in, in, uh, entirely, not everything. But uh, the, the ones you just mentioned, the issue of NDC talking about legalizing Okada. Come on, let's, let's put these jokes aside. How can legalizing Okada be a campaign promise in the 21st century? What is Okada? I have five motorbikes at home. I grew up riding motorbikes. And I picked my sisters and my brothers on anytime motorbikes. on motorbikes. It was never banned. It's, a, it's another means of transportation. If you cannot afford a car, you can afford a motorbike. And you can the difference between Okada and the one we carry our brothers and sisters is just taking off something called money. That's the difference. Exchange it's, of change. Exchange. Yeah, of, of, exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you come and sit down on TV and you make so much noise that, wow, I'm going to legalize Okada, and you expect Ghanaians to take you serious. You I that, won't take you serious. You think that is you, you, you are of, you are of, it's, 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 you are out of sync with reality? You are out of reality. Let's be honest. They've taken so what Ghana would you, for granted. What, what would you propose to be the alternative? Do, do, I mean, create jobs for the people. Okada is a means of transport. Okada is a means of transport. As an area, I know we would love to have this conversation and continue <laughs> and continue, but our time is limited. Uh, we're grateful that you came through to have a conversation with us. We wish you the very best in Thank you. your policy Thank you very uh, much. directions. You don't want to call them promises, your Not policy directions, and the party will be launching its uh, manifesto end of this month. I'm Stephen Antti. This is still your election command center. Please stay with us.